Okay, hi. Um, my name is Leah. Um, I'm a resident junior at Brandeis, and I'm majoring in anthropology and minoring in Islamic and Middle Eastern studies. Um, as I was said, I'm interning with the Next Gen department this summer. Um, so in January of this year, um, I went to Israel with the Brandeis JDC short-term service trip. Um, and I, along with, I think, there were 18 other people on the trip. We served um, uh, an Ethiopian Marine in Kiryat um, This is our group in the Guardian um, office. And I think that guy right there is uh, Rav Moshe. Um, he is the brains behind um, Guardian Panini. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Guardian model is actually part of JDC's immigrant integration program in Israel. Um, it literally means seed uh, in Hebrew, and um, the idea behind it, well, the, the problem that it seeks to remedy is basically how do you um, effectively integrate these immigrant populations that are um, kind of not only socially margina marginalized, but also live in areas where there, are really, there really isn't good access to um, social services like education and healthcare. Um, and so the idea is to create uh, these communities. Um, they're kind of like urban uh, kibbutzes, um, where the people basically collectively like all help each other. Um, so Rav Moshe um, is one of the first people in this community. Um, he actually immigrated to Israel himself as a boy from Ethiopia. Um, he's a really fascinating story, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> Um, he went out to university, he got an education, and then he sat down and thought, okay, what am I going to do now? Like, I can move to Jerusalem, and I can have this great life, and I can make money, and, you know, be really successful, or I can go back to Kiryat Gat and help my, my community members who have not been able to um, get the same education that I have. And so that's exactly what he did, um, and Garin Nini was born, um, and now sort of all of the Garin leaders have followed this model that he has set forth, um, and they have all gone out and, <coughs> and then come back to the community to help sort of lift everyone up. Um, okay, so the service that we did um, was <coughs> essentially a partnership with this community. Um, before we came, they basically identified uh, needs that they had that they couldn't meet themselves, and um, you know we went in and basically met those needs. Um, and our service was divided into two parts. We had physical labor in the morning, which was painting, um, and in the afternoons we were working with um, these groups. We'll get into that after. Um, so this is the building that we were painting. Um, it's it's the entranceway to an apartment building that they chose actually not because of. Um, the Gari members that lived there, although there were many that lived there. Um, they chose it because of its central location, um, because it's a very visible site, um, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so this is what it looked like before. Um, it was pretty decrepit. There was graffiti everywhere, pretty profane graffiti at that. Um, the floors were coming up, the paint was peeling, we're like convinced it was lead paint and we're all going to get lead poisoning. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. I mean, I have seen poverty in Israel before, and I was like just appalled by the situation that I know that my peers were as well. Um, so we got to work, and um, this woman is a Guardian member who saw what we were doing and was really inspired by it, and basically came down to start helping us. And this is the reason why they chose this building because. It's um, visibility meant that everyone who walked by saw, you know, this group of 19 college students, you know, getting their hands dirty and painting the walls, and they got inspired by it and were like, "Wow, if they can do this for us, like, what what can we do for ourselves?" Um, and so they all came down and started helping us, and that was a really kind of beautiful part of this trip. Um, there's just more shots of us <laughs> painting. <laughs> Um, so, in the afternoons, um, our group was 
split up to work with um, different youth groups. There were some people working with kind of kindergarten age children, some people with middle schoolers. Um, my group was with the Hashachar Girls Leadership Project. Um, they're pre-army girls, you know, 16 to 17 years old. Um, and the service was valuable for two reasons. One, because we really got to make this peer-to-peer um, -peer connection with girls kind of close to our own age. Um, and, you know, these, you know, they're, they're Ethiopians, they're not very well off, you know, a lot of them don't speak English. I don't think any of them have met an American before, so they were really excited to talk to us about Justin Bieber. <laughs> um, and then also, you know, they're doing a leadership project, so we were kind of their guinea pigs. They would basically run their leadership uh, programs for us. Um, and that was really interesting also because they didn't speak English, we didn't speak Hebrew, so they had to like modify everything um, with kind of like hand gestures and crazy movements and it was fun, but you know, they were effective and they're, they're great leaders and they're going to do great things for sure. So, um, they also really loved Quactidilio, so. <laughs> We also went with them one day um, as volunteers ourselves to volunteer with them at a gun um, at preschool. Um, this girl, Eben, you can't really see her face, but she has to be like the cutest little girl I've ever seen in my life. Um, and her story really stuck out to me. Um, she was the younger sister of a girl whose um, bat mitzvah the guardian was uh, raising money for because the family couldn't afford to pay for it themselves. Um, and she came from a, a pretty terrible home. I mean, her parents, I don't think, were physically abusive, but uh, what I gleaned from the conversation with her counselor was that they would basically, like, get into fights and then throw her in the middle and use her literally as a shield against each other. Um, and it was just, like, awful to hear, but also she's really happy and doing well and getting all these great um, social services from the brain. So it's, it was heartening. Um, so we also, um, in addition to the service that we did, got to kind of take a step back from this close partnership with the community and see some of the other projects that JDC supports in Israel. Um, so one night uh, we were taken out to this um, bar in Beersheba. It's uh, called Inca. <laughs> Um, and it's supported by the Center for Independent Living. Um, so it's a, it's a program for people with disabilities in Israel. Um, it's very, very difficult for people with disabilities to get employment in Israel. Um, there's a huge, huge stigma against people with dis disabilities in Israel, like really just awful. Um, and so this bar is job training for them. You know, they, they come and they learn how to be servers and bartenders and busboys and then they work and they get paid and they're able to support themselves and live independently. So that was a really fun night. <laughs> um, and then this is the uh, Lakia Bedouin uh, Women's like Weaving slash Empowerment Center. Um, this to me was actually one of the more inspiring things that we saw in Israel um, because the woman who founded it um, is a Bedouin herself. And she kind of looked at her life one day and said, this is just the pits, like this sucks. Um, you know, her husband like had control over everything that she did. She didn't know how to read. She didn't know anything about her own reproductive system. She didn't have a job. Like it was just, it was awful. Um, and she decided she wanted to do something about it. So she founded this center where uh, Bedouin women use their traditional art form of weaving and they make rugs and you know pillowcases and bags and tapestries and it's beautiful stuff by the way like if you ever get to go there <laughs> definitely buy something um and then they take the profits from what they've made and put it back into the center and they run literacy classes and they run job training and you know health education and they go also there are lots of um unincorporated like kind of illegal Bedouin towns that they go around to and make sure that the women there are getting the same access to these social services that they're providing in their city. Um, so we had a like pretty much a full day of going around to these sites and then we had one day to finish. Um, this is the mural that we did in the entranceway. Um, and this also is a mural that they painted inside the community clubhouse. Um, so 
before I get into my personal reflections, I just want to say as a disclaimer that um, I applied for this trip pretty much for one reason, which was to go to Israel for Jeep. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, I knew that there was a service aspect, and I was really, really skeptical of it. Um, I've done a lot of service in Israel. I did um, the Young Judea Year course before college, and I've also served overseas in Costa Rica, and I've found that um, all of my overseas uh, service experiences have been, like they just, <laughs> they were awful. Um, you know, there was a language barrier, and the organizations that I went through would literally just like pick me up and drop me in a site and say, okay, go. And it ended up being a waste of my time and also a waste of the placement's time because they had to spend their resources like showing me around and telling me what to do, and they just, you know, <coughs> didn't know what to do with me, and they would have been much better off if I had never showed up. Um, <laughs> so, um, I really, you know, I just didn't see any reason why this service would be different. Um, but actually what I found was that it was very different. Um, and I think the main reason was because JDC had the sense to bring us to a grassroots community. Um, this community knew exactly what they needed from us and, you know, they laid out those tangible and attainable goals and then we accomplished them. Um, we got the community members involved in the work that we did. We made like real peer-to-peer -peer <coughs> connections. Um, we're actually still like getting emails from them. They friended us all on Facebook. Like um, we saw pictures from Tubishvat, which was like shortly after the trip, where they went and like planted gardens at this building that we had just painted. Um, and in short, we made an impact, and it was visible and tangible and just like really. I don't quite have the words to describe like the impact that it had on us as well as on them. Um, so yeah, I've always known that I wanted to dedicate my life to overseas service, um, but I think before this trip I'd given up hope a little bit that there was any way to do that effectively and well. Um, and this trip really, like, really, really, really rejuvenated my, um, my faith in what we can do. Um, so I have the JC to thank for that, and I'm here, and I'll keep coming back, and yeah, that's it. Thank you.